Hello, 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 and welcome to Spirit Sessions, A View of the Light. Good morning and good afternoon, everybody. And we are so excited for our show today. We're going to have an amazing, very powerful show talking here with Joshua Friedman about the 9-9 Gateway and what does that mean? Um, it's going to be amazing. We ask you to share it out, to like it up, heart it up, and invite your friends because this is a very, very, very powerful show. And I believe that uh, before we get started, Teresa would like to do a short meditation for us to kind of ground us and help us to be able to retain all of the information that's about to come through. Yes, ahead, this is going to be very special. Yes. Joshua has a whole lot to give you, and he can give it really, really fast. So we want to be open. <laughs> so let's relax into our chairs. Let's feel ourselves grounded down and supported. Let's let the roots grow from our feet and soak up the nourishment from Mother Earth now. Soak it up. Let's take a deep breath. And exhale. And I really want you to set the intention that you're going to hear all the information he's given and set an intention that you're going to be able to retain this information or even to recall it when you need it the most. A lot of information and you may feel a lot of tension or itchiness or sensation in your third eye and your crown. Just allow for this and know that it's storing within you. So let's take another deep breath. And let's exhale. And open your eyes and let's learn from Joshua today. You've got some amazing stuff to share with us and I can't wait. So tell us quickly, who are you and why are we listening to you today? <laughs> Well, hello everyone. I'm super grateful to be here, and especially on this divine date of the feminine. And so, um, yeah, so my name is Joshua Freeman. Um, I grew up uh, mainly in California, back and forth from the Mount Shasta area to the Bay Area. I do um, also conscious hip hop music as well, and I produce an engineer. And I had a major awakening some years back. I was getting a lot of trouble in the Bay Area. And um, the universe kind of didn't give me an option whether I was going to wake up or not. It just kind of pushed me over the edge and forced me into my awakening. It's not a really rapid, rude awakening. Wow. Uh, I lost your voice. <clears throat> Do you guys hear him? I lost his voice. No, I can't hear him right yet. See how powerful he is. <laughs> He's amazing. Joshua, we can't hear your voice right now. Going on. There we Shoot. go. There we go. There, we got you. Okay. Ooh, okay, awesome. You're back. <laughs> you just have to stay yeah, near so, your Wi-Fi or wherever. <laughs> so should we just dive in head first? Or <laughs> Let's right dive in. in. You've got me. I'm really curious about that because today is 9-9 nine, nine, and then the year, you know. T tell us how that's so it's special to 36, all of us. which is 9. Oh, my God. Well, episode 36. Yep. <laughs> it's a 9. Oh, wow. <laughs> that, that's really divine synchronicity. Yeah, because uh, yep, cause, uh, three, uh, 3 plus 6 is 9. So And then and then the year is 18, 9-9, nine, nine, 18, and 1 plus 8 is 9. And then it's at 9 a.m. that we just started. So it's 9, 9, 18, 1 plus 8 is 9. Yeah. And then even if you do the 2018, like 2 times 18 is 36. So then there's the 36 again. So that's interesting. Wow. So, but yeah, so um, so basically um, there's this, uh, you know, Tesla talked about, he, he had a quote where he said, if people only knew the magnificence of the numbers 3, 6, and 9, they would have a key to the universe. And so for a long time, I've been getting downloads about the Fibonacci sequence and how it's the blueprint of the universe. And so it's like Russian dolls, and it's, it's the, the Fibonacci sequence is the blueprint of the universe all the way from the smallest particles, expanding bigger and bigger up into the highest dimensions and fluctuating back and forth, up and down, scaling. And so, um, you know, if for people that doesn't, don't know who, what the Fibonacci sequence is, the, the crown of your hair spirals out in the Fibonacci sequence, your fingerprint is the Fibonacci sequence, your double helix DNA is the Fibonacci sequence, the Milky Way is the Fibonacci, um, uh, snails like the shells 
have the Fibonacci sequence. And so the Fibonacci is actually the structure of time. And so <clears throat> now if you look at, uh, I don't know if you guys have ever seen the picture of like the baby in the womb at nine weeks, but the baby in the womb at nine weeks, you could put the structure of the Fibonacci right around and it fits right with the, the baby. And so um, even at nine weeks in the womb, we're like in the structure of a nine. So the Fibonacci itself in the is the nine. And so when you hear uh, sayings like cloud nine or cats have nine lives, well, you're in the womb of the feminine because it's spelled feminine. Like in any time there's an E at the end, you always pronounce it that way. So they try to just throw you off by saying feminine. No, it's the feminine. And so you're in the womb of the feminine for nine months. And then the cat's out the bag. So cats have Ooh. nine lives, right? <laughs> so <laughs> so pretty yeah, much what that. I'm talking about today is, um, is kind of some ascension keys that have to do with the number nine and also honoring the divine feminine. Because, you know, you talk about ascension. Well, if we came and we fell from those higher dimensions and we fell from those higher gates into this DNA, well, if you want to go back out, you got to go back out the way you came in. So as far as ascension goes, you have to kind of reverse engineer your timeline. And so, um, you know, a lot of people talk about the body of Christ and Christ consciousness. Well, the original word Christ is actually Christo, and Christo means crystal. So uh, have you guys ever seen the picture of uh, the first five-day development of the embryo next to the five-step process of how the flower of life comes to be? Have you guys ever seen that? No, I no? haven't okay. seen all that together. Okay, yeah, yeah. So there's a there's a picture you could go look it up. Um, yeah, it shows the first five day development of the embryo, how this the one cell organism splits into a two cell and a four cell and so on and so forth. And so if you look at okay. the five step process of the flower life, like the seed of life and the tree of life and all of that right next to it, they match parallel because you're talking about your DNA was shaped by sound, by cymatics. And so if you've ever seen cymatics, when they take a tone generator and you pour salt out on the tone generator and then they tune it to the different harmonic oh, yeah. frequencies. Yeah, so what's, happening there, so what's happening there is sound is the architect of light and matter. So everyone in Ascension, they think it's about the light. They think it's all about the light, but it's actually about the sound. It's really the sound that sets the tone. And even in the Bible, God said, let there be light. Then there was light. So it's really the sound that sets the tone. So the way that I've been shown the universe uh, dimensionally is it all gets condensed into like a 15-dimensional blueprint. And so the way I'm shown, I've been shown is when we choose to incarnate, our consciousness, our spirit is in the 15th gate, which is unity consciousness, a unified field. And there is no duality perception there, our ego. And so when we incarnate, our consciousness falls from the 15th gate down to the 14th gate, which is the sound gate. So you have consciousness and sound. And that consciousness and sound falls down to the 13th gate, which is consciousness, sound, and light. And that consciousness, sound, and light falls down to the 12th gate. And the 12th gate is your 12th DNA strand. You have 12, 12 DNA strands. And so right. your 12th strand is the... From, from uh, the ninth gate to the twelfth gate, it's diamond. It goes crystal to diamond. And so you're coming in through the diamond gate. And so you hear little sayings like diamonds last forever, diamond in the rough. Well, diamonds get created under pressure. So when you're in the womb, <laughs> you see you're under pressure. You're, under, you're inside of that, uh, that pressure cooker in the womb. And so, so again, so the consciousness falls down to sound. The sound sets the tone and programs the light depending on what ray of light shines into your liquid crystal embryo, your 12th DNA strand determines how your DNA programs and manifests and expresses itself as you. So for example, um, I was meditating in Mount Shasta a couple years back. And so I was just going up through the chakras. And so I was in the, I went from the root chakra, went up red, orange, yellow, and then got to the heart chakra green. And when I got to heart chakra green, I, I heard open my eyes and I opened my eyes and I was in the middle of nature. So I was just surrounded by nothing but trees and plants and, and just green. It was just green everywhere. It was like I meditated up. I didn't really, the green didn't stand out to me as much until I meditate up in there and that over my eyes. And I'm like, wow, just like, it's like I meditated up into the green dimension. And now it's like everything that's standing out is green. And so, but then I looked up and I seen the sky was baby blue. And I thought, wait, does the earth have the same light prism, the same light code algorithm that we do? And so I thought from the core of the earth. The core of the earth is red, orange, yellow, and then green, the grass, the trees, the flowers, the plants. And you go up a little farther and the sky is baby blue. And you go a little deeper in the sky and it's indigo blue. And then wow. space is black. So black and blue makes purple. So the earth has a purple aura. So the earth has the same light code algorithm, runs on the same code that we do. 
And so I then when it. you realize, and so I remember when I was first awakening, I was called to Mount Shasta by the spirit. I was, I literally, I literally was sleeping and I heard the words Mount Shasta and my eyes open and I was like, I have to go to Mount Shasta. And I tapped on my wife and my kid and I was like, Hey, we got to go to Mount Shasta. Like right now. I'm like, yep, <laughs> let's go. <laughs> and so we go and, and there's a, right before Mount Shasta, there's a city called Dunsmere. And so, oh, I know that uh, place. So, yeah. yeah. And so I'm driving through Dunsmere that. on my way up the mountain to Mount Shasta and I start like, I'm driving too. And I start like, um, phasing in between dimensions. And so Ooh. I kind of phase out of dimension and out of nowhere, I see myself inside of my mother's womb. And then I see <gasps> and hear my mother's, and then I see and hear my mother's heartbeat. Yes. And I, and, yes. and I heard, and I basically heard that, um, how like they say that the mother's heartbeat soothes the child in the womb. Yes. Um, yes. That was Mount Shasta for me. Mount Shasta's the vibration and frequency that Mount Shasta puts off was like a spiritual womb for me where I was going to be reborn. And so I went up there and the whole time we were up there visiting with my family, um, every, all this, just tons of different things from my childhood were coming up to the surface, just all kinds of stuff from like sports. Cause my whole family is from San Francisco. And so I walked in this pizza place to get some pizza and they had like Jerry, right? Like my, my mom was actually a daycare teacher. And so she, she watched, uh, Jerry Rice's children and stuff like that. So just the 49ers, that was a big part of my childhood. And a lot of stuff was coming up from my childhood <laughs> while I was there. And I was told, you have to move here. And I had like only a couple Ooh. thousand dollars to my name. I probably had just enough to move up there. And I took the last of the money I had in faith and just went up there. And so Mount Shasta is the root chakra of the earth. It's Stargate number one. And so I really went there and, and healed my past and cleared my root and cleared my mind and got the narrative, the religious narrative out of my head, uh, the worldly narrative out of my head, the financial, just I got everyone's voice out of my head. And I didn't know anyone up there, so I was hiking and meditating by myself every day, and the only person I could blame for the way I thought or the way I felt, whether I was angry, depressed, or sad, was me. So I had to learn how to get to know myself and deal with myself. And so that's why a lot of people aren't really comfortable in just being and being their self. That's why so many people have to, like, smoke every few minutes, smoke a cigarette or, or whatever it is. They, they have to keep their right. mind busy because they don't actually know how to, like, deal with their self and face their situations. So p people – need to use certain things to help regulate their energy emotional spectrum but anyway what i'm getting to is that uh living in mount shasta definitely was like being in the womb and i was totally reborn and reinvented myself and rewrit my code my dna up there and so <clears throat> so like i said before it's the consciousness programs the sound the sound sets the tone and programs the light and so what I'm so what I was getting at with the with in Mount Shasta when I was meditating and I go up in the heart chakra and it's green out my eyes and everything is green and then the earth has the same light code as we do. What I realized is uh then when I seen myself in the womb and the mother's heartbeat, then I came out and I was in space and then I was and I looked at the earth and I know there was a huge baby inside of the earth and I was shown how earth is actually a cosmic womb. And I'm like, oh, it makes so much sense. There's so many wombs within the earth, so earth is just a womb. It's like it's it's the womb of of wombs so so wow. uh yeah so so yeah earth is this cosmic womb and so i see this baby inside of it <clears throat> and so um yeah so it's just about being reborn and right now mother gaia earth it's going through this phase of like uh i've been getting these downloads about like the trinities of evolution and so Basically, there's the phase of uh, – see, people say, like, when you comprehend something, you understand. But the truth is if you understand something, you actually don't comprehend it. That, if you understand, that means the information's over your head. So the process in how we pr process information and the code is actually we understand. Then we're kind of like, what is that? And we dive into it, and then we start to understand. And then once we fully process and understand, then we pop out the box, pop out the lamp, and we overstand. And that's mastering, ma uh, ascended master. And, and so the earth is going through that same phase right now. It's going through a caterpillar, cocoon, and butterfly. That's understanding, then cocoon, understanding. Then you pop on their side, and you're butterfly, full bloom, full blossom. And so... <clears throat> and so, um, really, this earth, uh, you know, I, I'm, I, the way I talk, I talk nonlinear because I see and think nonlinear. And so I kind of go right. round and round and then I'll tie everything into a knot. And so <laughs> I'll jump into the nines real quick. Um, I've talked about this before on another podcast, but I'll just briefly, I had this one, uh, I, I woke up in the middle of the night. Um, and I was just boom, like wide awake instantly, almost like I'm on psychedelics or something like that. I'm just boom and I'm awake and I'm super aware. And I just hear, look at the clock and I look at the clock. It's 144 on the clock. And so I'm like, huh, it makes me think of the 144,000 or the, 
And so I get up and grab my phone off the charger and I get on Facebook and the first post I see is from my favorite physicist, Nassim Harami. And he's been a huge catalyst in my awakening because every time I have an out by experience and I get physics about our multidimensional reality and then I come on this side to try to get a reference for it, he's the guy coming with it right at that time. And so me and him are always synced up telepathically. It's interesting. Right and so I see, so I see 140, I wake up, I hear, look at the clock, it's 144. I grab my phone off charger i get on facebook the first post i see is from nasim Haramine, and i press play on the video and it starts spiraling up the fibonacci sequence it scales up the fibonacci sequence 12 times and it stops and highlights the number 144 in gold and i'm like no way this is crazy synchronous it's like <laughs> And so then right there, I realized all these, all these downloads start coming in like, oh, that's why 144,000 is the number of ascension, all these different cultures, because 12 times 12 is 144. And the Fibonacci sequence is the blueprint of our DNA, and we have 12 DNA strands. So if you scale up the, Fibonac if you scale up the DNA strands 12 times, the number of the fully activated 12 DNA strands is 144. And then right. so you have 12 DNA strands, and you have nine gates of consciousness. Well, what's one plus four plus four? Nine. Nine. Yeah. So it's cool. all nine gates activated and all 12 DNA strands activated. So these are ascension codes. And so right there, this equation comes to me very simple, but I see three nines in my mind's eye. And I think, well, what's three times nine? 27. What's two plus seven? Nine. And that's interesting. Three nines makes one big nine. And I think, well, what's 27 is 27? 54. Five plus four equals nine. What's 54 plus 54? 108. One plus zero plus eight equals nine. And so what's happening is, is uh, if you guys know about the Merkaba, well, yes. the Merkaba is the structure of the universe, but where where the more the the Merkaba is more of the micro, the Merkaba is more of the micro blueprint, and so our structure is the yeah is the Merkaba field, yep. But the bigger the bigger Russian doll to the Merkaba is the 64 isotropic tetrahedron that Nassim Haramein talks about. And so as you align your gates, what's happening is is when your conscious sound and light incarnated into the embryo into your mother's womb, conscious you sound. your spirit. Your spirit took on your mom and dad's DNA that was already pre-programmed by their thought patterns and, uh, and trauma. And so when you're born now, your spirit is trapped inside the body, trapped inside the identity, trapped inside the box, inside the lamp. And so your spirit's processing the reality through the programming of the DNA. Then as you start to reawaken, you start to remember that you're actually not this body and you're actually eternal, timeless, priceless light being. You start to open your chakras and go up through the kings of heaven. Within you go up through the gates. And when you open up that crown chakra, what happens? You get your crown back and you get your connection and infinite flow to the universe back. And the lid pops off your consciousness. And now instead of the light being stuck inside the body, processing through the DNA, now the light overflows and comes around you. And it bridges around you. And the light's on the outside now. And now instead of your spirit processing through your DNA, your DNA is actually processing through your spirit. Mm. And so... So what it is, is you incarnated yourself and your mom and your mom gave birth to you. And then as you reawaken, you're, you gave birth to your spirit again outside of yourself. And so it's interesting because when, when a woman gives birth, when you're coming down through the birth canal, you're actually spiraling out your head. Yes, you're right, yes. And they call it crowning. And they call it crowning, right? You're being crowned. Yes. You're crowning wow. and you're spiraling down the Fibonacci sequence because the woman is a gateway. The womb man, W-O-M-B. M A N, womb man, womb. Wow. So, uh, yeah. so, 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 well, with that, Josh, so with that, I was then, just wondering for the normal, for the, for the, like, uninitiated, what does this 9 9 gateway then mean to us? What, what should we be doing? What, so, it's, what, so what's what, happening is we we're being it? reborn right now. The earth, not just us, mm -hmm. but the earth itself is being reborn and it's going through that caterpillar. Cocoon, yes. inside, the cocoon is the womb, and then you're being reborn and popping out on the other side, and you're a butterfly, you're full bloom. So, so there's the there's there's the understanding, understanding, overstanding, and there's the caterpillar, the cocoon, and the butterfly, or there's the seed, and then it roots itself, and then once it roots itself, it pops up above the surface and comes into full bloom. So that's what I'm talking about is being reborn right now. But see, when we came into the womb, like I said, <clears throat> our mom and dad's DNA already had a script wrote in it. So when your spirit took on the script, it took on an identity. The identity created ego. That ego is a self-defense mechanism that locks your spirit into the, into the body. And so as you start to dismantle that ego and you start to realize your true identity as a timeless light being, a spirit being, then you start to reactivate those gates and give birth to yourself. And so everything, the energy is really fertile right now. It's a time to be manifesting. It's a time to be creating new things and starting new projects and, um, yeah, so it's it's a it's a really divine time to be happening, and so that number nine, the reason you're seeing 
nine times, you know, three nines equals 27, then two plus seven equals nine. And they just keep, because what's happening is they taught us math linear. So they taught us math like yes. two-dimensionally on a piece of paper, sideways and down. But in the universe, the math is actually cycling. And beyond cycling, just as that tesseract does or that Merkaba field does, it folds in and out of itself. And so the sphere is the perfect shape. So your sphere, uh, the sphere has no corners or no edges, and it radially simultaneously projects light and information in 360 degrees, all angles at once. It has no blind spot. So it's the perfect shape. It reaches infinitely. And so the nine is the perfect number. Because no matter how many times you stack the nine on top of itself, it folds in and out of itself. It's the universal number because the Fibonacci sequence itself is the structure of a nine. So all the way from the bottom of the universe to the top of it, it's in the structure of a nine. Therefore, it's universal. So the, the, the only way to truly be free is to be independent. And so becoming an independent being is becoming an interdimensional, inner time, inner space, self-sufficient, self-reliant, which becomes universal, self-sustaining. You see what I'm saying? Because you become like Tesla, like free energy technology. You're recycling your own energy. You don't even need anything. You're not codependent on anything because anything you're codependent to, you're actually enslaved to. And so it's about becoming independent, becoming inner time, interdimensional. And so, yeah, so, so this whole universe and this earth is a womb. And so this earth is actually a pressure cooker. And if you pressure cook water long enough, what happens is, so if you look at the, this, if you're pressure cooking water, if you look at this body of water I'm speaking of as the gravity that we're held down by, the pressure, the gravity, and the, and the laws of physics that this field runs on. And so, so if you pressure cook that wa water long enough, at first you're binded by it and you're held down by the pressure of the water. But then if you pressure cook it long enough, you'll cause the water, which is actually a liquid crystal, to fold in on itself and implode and create a sphere within itself under that pressure, right? Well, that sphere is a diamond, a diamond in the rough, right? And so, so if you cause that water to implode on itself, then it will fold in on itself and implode and create a perfect shape, a sphere inside of it. Now what happens is, is that sphere is no longer binded by the pressure and gravity and field of that body of water. It's actually cookie cut itself out of the field and it's became its own universe. It's became interdimensional, inner time, inner space. And what do you watch that bubble do? That that bubble's an air pocket that cookie cuts itself right out of this universe, and it runs on its own physics, its own time, and it goes zero point and it floats right up to the surface of the water, and then it pops in a, it pops up into photonic, into light. And so this is the key to ascension. So when you talk about um like Christ consciousness, the body of Christ, well, Christ means crystal. Well, guess what? Before you manifested as a physical human being, you were a liquid crystal sphere so when you talk about the christopher christ like my name my name is joshua christopher friedman and so i was actually supposed to be named after my dad and then my mom um said i was setting her arms and said that like the room lit up when i was first setting her arms and she said my name will be joshua ah. christopher and so and after uh yeshua because she was a christian and stuff like that and so and so i just now recently came to, when i got these downloads came to the realization about what's encoded in my name and what's encoded in my name is actually ascension because yeshua is someone who broke through the barrier opened up the floodgates yes. trailblazed the trail but then he passes the torch and said you will perform even greater miracles than i did because he believed in you just as much as you believed in him if not more and so and so uh <laughs> so uh, so yeshua, we, we're, we're just gotta yeah. we're getting close to our end time and i want you to be able to tell us about what you're going your next project and um Okay. Big event. Um, okay. Yeah, do I have like one more minute? Yeah. Do I have one, more minute, one to, more minute to break this? Because I was yes. almost one more minute. Yeah. Okay. 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 So, uh, so ascension's encoded my name. Yeshua is the one who sent it, and then Christo, Christopher, Christo, Christ, Christo. And if you put an E at the end, it's Christosphere. Well, the sphere is the perfect shape. That sphere that got created in that body of water is the diamond in the rough. And what do diamonds do? They last forever. And so when you're talking about ascension and you're talking about activating, uh, ascending through the body of Christ and Christ consciousness, you're talking about activating your crystal diamond plasma genetics and activating that diamond body. And diamonds are so sharp, they can cut through glass. So you've been binded by a hologram that's on a, that's like a glass field that's real fragile and shattered. But if you, you know what don't kill you, make you stronger, you know, the pressure turns you into a diamond and you become a master. And when you do that, a diamond can cut through glass. You can cookie cut yourself right out of this dimension and into another. So the Christo sphere is the, the key to ascension. It's the zero point sphere that the Merkaba is folding in out of itself inside of. And so, like I said, it, you know, when you create that diamond sphere around you, it goes zero point. It floats right up to the surface and goes photonic into light, like your light beam. Because what I was saying, okay, so yeah, your consciousness and conscious comes out of sound, conscious sound and light comes down into the diamond gate, the liquid crystal 
DNA, the embryo, and then programs and manifest expresses itself as you. So now if you want to send, you have to go back out the way you come in. You got to reverse engineer yourself back to your inner child that had a crystal clear heart intention and crystal clear windows of perception, then back into your mother's womb and give rebirth to yourself because it was in your mother's womb where you wrote the code of your DNA. But this time now you're aware, and instead of running on the script, now you take control of the script and you're writing your own, and then you re-give birth to yourself, and that's the real model of being born again. You have to give birth to yourself and ascend and master yourself. Right on. So it's the placenta. So I that crystal that. sphere is the placenta. It's the placenta. That's the crystal sphere. And so it's you have to go back out to the feminine. You came in through the feminine. Ooh. Awesome. And I could go way deeper into all this stuff, but we don't have much time. I bet. I know. I know. I could could feel that. I got so many chills listening. But what are you doing? You and Laurel Love and um, and, um, Jason and um, Laura Eisenhower are are doing something really amazing on the 11th and 12th. You could promote that. Yes. So I'm super excited. Um, Two years ago in Mount Shasta, I went. I paid a lot of money to go to a conference and watch Corey Good and Laura Eisenhower. And when she got off stage, I kind of pulled her aside and shared her that I was getting a lot of the same stuff that she shared. And then uh, me and her met the next day for lunch, and we've stayed in contact ever since. Two years later, come full circle. Now I'm speaking, headlining side by side with her. And not only with her, but with my big brother, Jason Westerfield, who is like my hero. Like I look up to him and honor him so much. And I don't idolize or worship anybody, but I really honor this guy and believe he's like the real Neo. Like, he is the real, like, I think he's the template for the divine masculine on the planet. And so tune in and do not miss him and me and and uh, Laura Eisenhower, because I'm going to go deeper into all of this at the um, conference. And, yeah, it's just going to be a really wide to your page on this. Yes, yes. to your page on, on this, on this video. So if okay, you're going to go in the comments. To that and, event. Yes. Okay, yeah, yes, I'll tickets. definitely. Okay. Okay, awesome. Yes, I'll do that. And yes, so it's called Exiting the Matrix. It's a webinar and seminar in Dallas, Texas on the 17th floor um, near Dealey Plaza. And so it's, it's yeah, we're, we're going to teach you how, to, how you enter the matrix, how you decode and hack and exit the matrix. And that's a brief, I was just talking about that briefly, ascension through understanding, understanding, overstanding, caterpillar, cocoon, butterfly, and the seed, right. the root, and then the full bloom. And so... Awesome. Um, and that's what we're so going through right now. And that's what the Earth's going through right now. Okay. Yeah, yeah. This is a preview, and we're being reborn right that's now. That's great. So, yeah. Isn't that neat? It just uh, reminds me of all the support guys, that we it, really have. Yeah. Yeah. And then also, yeah, if you, you guys, guys are interested, um, also check out my music. I have a uh, I have conscious music all about this stuff. And so my sound, I have a SoundCloud. My SoundCloud name is Third Eye. It's 3-R-D-E-Y-E. And I'm like the one right at the top. Like if you look I up there, I'm that. the first one. Cool. We've, I put your Instagram link in, your Facebook link in there as well. So okay, that awesome. should help I out. That. Um, that would be wonderful. And if you can put any other links you want in the comments. Yeah, um, put any links you want Just wanted to thank everyone there. for okay. being here. I'm going to give a quick announcement. Okay, and thank then I'll, you. I appreciate it. I'll let you say something at the end there, Josh. Hang on for just one minute. Um, okay. Uh, we're very glad you all reached us here. Um, share this out to your friends. And uh, li- this is worth a re-listen to, everyone. Um, Later on, right after this at 1 p.m. Uh, Eastern, uh, 8, 10 p.m., uh, 10 a.m. Uh, Pacific time, Kathy Holmeyer and her multi- Nourishing Your Multidimensional um, Body is on. And at 8 p.m. Eastern, with PST, it's Janelle Cameron from Australia with uh, the Cosmic Ascension Report. Um, next week, uh, um, uh, Joshua, we're going to have Laura Eisenhower on. Is it next week? Yes. 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 Next week, we're yes. going to have Laura Eisenhower on, um, and uh, we're very excited about that. And it's it was so synchronistic that you were on and booked not knowing what was going on with the two of you, and, and Laura is booked after the conference. So <clears throat> hopefully we'll be able to share some more interesting information from the conference out, too, on our next show. And we're really glad to have you here. And if you guys like this kind of news and expanding your consciousness with all this interesting information, um, all week long on the Akashic uh, Academy community page and network, we have shows all week long. And if you really are into this and you want to go a little deeper, you can join the Akashic Academy members only page and get some classes from Emily and some from Coach Nick and some intuitive more um, more activations and workshops and developing your uh, inner body and your inner work. Um, 
join us there. It's only 11 11 a month or $100 for a year membership. It's a, a, a spiritual gym membership you can use. Um, anything else, Teresa, you want to say with Josh? Um, and, and to stand I want to people? remind everybody to, to go and like our YouTube page as well. And um, Joshua, hold on afterwards. Uh, one time I um, I I was on an Amtrak train and we broke down in Dunsmuir. I just I oh, wonder yeah. if that had anything to do with my awakening because we're sitting there staring at Mount Shasta all day long and because mm -hmm. Amtrak had to wait for Union Pacific to clear the mudslide or the snow out, off the track mm. and it was it was the funnest weirdest time for me so i just yeah it's the root chakra of the planet if you watch those vortexes the cloud vortexes that happen above it it's an antimatter vortex and then the clouds are passing by it which are physical matter and they get sucked into the antimatter vortex and then you're seeing the physical manifestation of a multi-dimensional stargate a gateway of fibonacci yeah. sequence oh i love cool. that it's and those so cool. lenticular clouds are so interesting Aren't they so beautiful? Thank you very much for coming on. So if you didn't know, yeah, thank you for having me. Who won yeah, tell me who yeah. won. Joshua, who won with <laughs> FedEx Marie? Oh, yeah, that, oh, that's right. Last week, who won, uh, won a, um, uh, a reading with FedEx Marie is Mar Marla Torres. Yay, Marla. She's such a faithful watcher. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, this week, if you share it at the most, you'll win a... Uh, a uh, one card draw and a meditation with Risa. So like this out, share it up, and um, and uh, we'll see you next week with Laura Eisenhower and Joshua. And good luck. We're looking forward to hearing all about what you did. Yes, come and see us again. You're amazing. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Thank you very much, Everyone. and thank you for having me. Thank you. Thank you. Happy nine nine nine. In La Cash. I'm another you. We are one.